What's going on, Giants fans? Your boy, Big Blue Steph, coming at you with another video. Do me a favor. When you get a chance, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think about this video. Uh, yeah, this one, I'm going I'm to try to keep it G-rated. Uh, you know, I had something in mind already for this video, mostly about DJ and how he's balling out. But I just watched um, a little YouTube video um, from Get Up earlier this day um, with Dan Orlowski and, you know, Greenberg, uh, Mike Greenberg, and what's his name, uh, Rex Ryan and uh, Ryan Clark, you know, that panel. Um, but yeah, man, the main, the main part of this video was really just praising DJ and how he's really come to, like, grow into a quarterback. Like, seeing everything that he's gone through over these last four years, um, you know, from the excitement of his rookie year, you know, when he was with Shermer and, you know, just really balling out, you know, as much as he can. He was a free spirit, you know, saw a lot of potential, you know, of course, in all the games he seemed to win was against like, you know, the Washington team and whoever, whoever else it was. But, um, yeah, you just saw that, you know, he was not completely a gunslinger, but, you know, he was confident and he wasn't scared to make mistakes, you know, and then the next two years on a judge. You know, things just didn't look good for him. You know, we all, well, not we all, but a lot of us didn't want him around. You know, it's like, oh, man, who's our next quarterback? How are we going to get through this next, you know, couple of years? You know, we need to really establish ourselves. And it just didn't look good for him. You know, we weren't sure if it was really him. Was it his environment? Did he have it in him? Was it the Joe Judge effect? You know, as long with Jason Garrett, was it? You know, no O-line, no running game, blah, 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 receivers. And this year, you know, we get with Dayball, and all of a sudden, you're seeing a progression. I mean, we have a, you know, offensive line is playing a lot better as a unit. Um, you know, we watch this game against Jacksonville. You know, Evan Neal goes down. Um, Bredesen goes down. You know, and our backups come in, Phillips and, uh, you know, Azudu come in. And, you know, we don't really miss a beat. You know, so he's got a little bit of pass protection. He's finding receivers. This dude is climbing the pocket. You know, he's sidestepping the rush. Once he sees a little opening, he's going for it. He knows where the first down markers are. He's, you know, he's going for it. He's being a cerebral quarterback, which we weren't sure if he really could be, you know. A lot of times you look at him and it's like deer in the headlights, you know, slow to response. You know, is the guy open or, you know, will he be able to throw him open? You know, we're seeing a whole different Daniel Jones this year. So it's just been, you know, I don't want to say Eli-esque, but, I mean, Eli 2.0 plus because, you know, he can run. But seeing DJ at the line, checking out of, you know, certain packages, calling the blitz packages about to come at him, you know, just like rearranging the play, calling new play. It's like, whoa, this is what we've been waiting for. And it's here, you know. And just imagine if he had a full complement of receivers, you know, Saquon is doing his thing. You know, we have, you know, our O-line that's getting better. It's just like, wow, come on, this is the DJ we've been waiting for. You know, we saw it kind of evolve in that Dallas game. And this game again, like you see it, it's like, man, they done took Saquon out the game. I need to do my part. I need to do my part. And he did it, you know, legs, arms, you know, slide and he even slid a couple times and it looked decent on one one of them should have been a no a late hit i think i'm gonna helmet but whatever you know you just see you're seeing that progression so to sit back <coughs> excuse me and watch um what's his face orlowski dan orlowski you know the guy i guess before this being famous for running in the back of the end zone for like five seconds i'm like talk about pocket awareness i mean where was that you in a end zone running around like a deer with you know in the headlights yourself you know so to see him comment on you know daniel jones i'm like is this hate on dan you know is he the better dan i don't i don't get the hate but to say that you know the giants aren't winning because of dj i mean you don't put it all on dj but they are winning with dj and he's making a big strong impression he's you know leading that offense to see him that fire in him like you ain't never seen in DJ before and you're seeing that you know he's getting mad when these receivers are dropping passes you know you see the the will to want to win this game and the intensity he really wants to win this game he's really putting a lot forward you know he's he's learned how to you know mature in the pocket 
you know, read the defense, even the way he runs the RPOs, the way he's able to hide the ball in the back, you know, when, you know, he's choosing to, you know, pull the ball down. You know, it's it's amazing to see the progression in this dude. And to say that, you know, DJ is this and is not that and you can't with, win with them or whatever, you know, like Orlowski, I was like, dude, what are you smoking, man? Like, stop hating. It just didn't make sense to me. So I definitely had to put this video out here. I was like, I can't, I can't, man. I, it almost brought me to, you know, a couple F-bombs and this and that. I'm trying to keep this G-rated, you know, for the kids and all just in case, but... Nah, that that was just terrible. I mean, I like how Rex Ryan really put it out there. You know, like, you know, DJ is a big factor. But Orlowski kept saying, oh, no, you know, they're winning because of Saquon and that defense. If DJ didn't play his butt off this game, and you saw what the defense was, we were barely, barely bending but not breaking with that defense this week. Jacksonville was all over the place. We couldn't stop Kirk. Etienne, he kept running through the D, you know. I mean, if Trevor Lawrence was a little more accurate, on a couple of those passes, we've been in big trouble. DJ moving the pocket, finding his receivers. What do you have? About four or five different drop passes. Imagine, if, imagine if those you know passes get through, you know, completed. So I don't know, man. Orlowski, <laughs> you lost me on that one. You know, I thought you were a credible source, but obviously you don't watch these Giants. You know, and you definitely haven't been watching DJ because this is not the same DJ for the last two to three years. And it's the excitement of DJ from the first year, all mixed in one. So, you know, the progression, you know, as a Giants fan, you know, you see the progression in him. If you've been here from the beginning, if you've seen the torture <laughs> that he's, you know, this whole Giants team had been for the last couple of years and seen how, you know, unimaginative the offense was, how boring, how, you know, it's just there's no... It was just blah, you know. DJ couldn't do but so much, you know. And now he has a coaching staff in place from the QB coach all the way up to the head coach, support staff. You know, everyone's pulling for each other. This is just not the same Daniel Jones. So I, I give him props, you know, at this point. I won't say, of course, give him that long-term contract, you know, six, seven games in, you know, we'll take it. But, I mean, if he continues on this course again, I say, you know, two to three years at the very least, and just, you know, ride it out. But to say that Daniel Jones is not a huge factor in our wins right now, imagine if it was Tyrod Taylor, Mr. I can't stay on the field, but for so, but maybe for two or three series. Imagine Davis Webb. Do you think he really could have sidestepped a lot of that pass rush? Josh Allen coming around, that other dude, Fenno, Wello, whatever his name was, the linebacker. You know, what's his face? Walker up the middle. Nah, DJ pimped us through this <laughs> sorry to say he pimped us through this game and he carried us on like we're gonna do this and this is what it's gonna be period no questions asked and then by the time you know the defense came around oh saquon can run saquon can hit these little out you know saquon has little issues early or throughout the game but you know he stayed consistent too so you know that duel, you know having saquon and dj being able to run for 100 yards or just the threat of run Imagine, you know, with Wandale coming back, imagine if Tony happens to come back. Imagine if we get one more decent receiver, consistent receiver, who we don't have to worry about dropping passes like Slayton did on that what was it first drive. You're like, come on, dude, come on. You know, give DJ his credit where it's due, and it's definitely due. Anyway, I rambled enough. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, DJ, Giants, 6-1. Seven to one on the way. We got Seattle. I think uh, that's our true challenge. I mean, it's a our first real long trip, going over another time zone. Seattle is playing out of their minds right now. I wasn't really expecting that this season, but you know, we grind these games out. Like it or love it, media haters, whoever you are, we win. It doesn't matter how we win. All we care about is winning. You guys want the fancy stuff? Go look at KC. You want to see a team just fight for each other? Hey, check out the Giants. Also, you know, quick recovery for uh, Bellinger. That was pretty tough to, you know, see happen. And also Neil and um, Bredesen. Hope you guys get better soon. Anyway, you guys, have a good one. Take care. I'm out.